Ladies and gentlemen, the Twitter files part five are out. You can go to Elon Musk's Twitter profile, but also Barry Weiss. She came out with the Twitter files thread part five, the removal of Trump from Twitter. I will have a live stream on this channel at 5.45 p.m. Pacific. Please be here. Our live streams are fantastic. We have a lot of fun, and I will read through one through five. We'll start with five first of the Twitter files. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. We found out from the Twitter files today and the other, the, the preceding revelations, but today especially, they did not think that Trump was compelling or inciting or telling anyone or giving some kind of subliminal or even um, walking a tightrope in terms of committing a criminal act. He never compelled anyone to commit crimes that day in January. He never told anyone uh, or his words were never interpreted as hey, we're going to go and commit this mayhem and chaos and it's because Trump said so we're going to do this. That's the mentality among the morally superior. The morally superior among us, their sensibilities um, are the basis for every argument. So when they say, well, Trump should be banned, he should be banned, his speech is protected under the First Amendment and if he did commit a crime by uh, trying to foment chaos mayhem criminal activity that he would have already been indicted so you basically have the special counsel just completely like dismantled right now at these twitter files okay the twitter files show that they needed an excuse to silence republicans conservatives trump republicans primarily and trump it wasn't about protecting people it, just like it wasn't about protecting people on a whole lot of topics that they silenced. It was about control. What they'll do, the left or Democrats or media, um, they'll say, oh, the detractors or naysayers will say, well, he had to be removed. Obviously, his speech and his words um, were uh, motivating people giving people an incentive to commit crimes that day in January. No, they weren't. Just like the words of Democrats didn't motivate the very small number of people who committed one to one to two billion dollars in property damage. 19 lives lost were, were 19 lives were lost that entire summer according to Wikipedia. That summer preceding January, okay, you saw one to two billion dollars in lives lost. I support the people who demonstrated it was a noble cause. Yes, worthwhile, obviously. Much more noble or worthwhile than why people were upset or why individuals were upset committing crimes. Infinitely more, like a complete two different topics. One, noble to protect lives. One, because of a political issue. But you didn't have one to two billion dollars with the, you know, the, the, the people who claim to support Trump committing crimes. You didn't have one to two billion dollars in property damage. You had one to two billion dollars in property damage that summer. And then the sens the sensibilities and the cognitive dissonance roll in and they, oh, that's what? You can't compare the two. I'm not comparing the two directly in terms of why people demonstrated. Uh, or I'm comparing the property damage and the lives lost and the chaos and the mayhem and the response by Democrats when it was an entire summer where, where, where businesses and, and cities had to endure curfews and businesses were, were shut down. What was like, that's okay, that mayhem and chaos, because that's not part of any noble endeavor. You didn't do anything to help humanity by torching a building. If you are a you know, a person who leans left and did that. And so you had fiery but mostly peaceful. The words of Democrats were not silenced on Twitter. And these Democrats gave tacit approval. And sometimes they actually told people to get in people's faces. There's one quote years before, get in people's faces. 
And there's a whole bunch of rhetoric inciting emotions with Democrats. That's all they do is, in, is, is, is you know, foment emotions. They live off of emotions. They live off of feelings and sensibilities. And that's how the Democratic Party runs without being able to amplify their emotions and suppress the emotions of their political opponents or amplify the the feelings and the passions of their voters against Trump. They don't have a political party. The economy stinks. You have record highs in inflation. Real wages are down like 8.5, maybe 7.5% now. And we're, we're in, we had a recession. We're heading into a recession. Geo, in terms of geopolitics, absolute catastrophe. So Democrats won because they have every conceivable advantage prior to Elon Musk taking over Twitter. But see, their words are okay if their words lead to an entire summer full of curfews and chaos and mayhem and property damage, one to two billion dollars. Think about how many buildings that it would entail for one to two billion dollars in property damage. And then think about the difference between the re- the, 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 the reaction to rhetoric and to chaos. And then here's what, here's what um, the Twitter files really show, and we'll talk about this tonight. Other world leaders have stated infinitely worse, literally talking about wiping a country off the map, which is what left-leaning people like have been like have said and got kicked off of platforms. But le- like like you have you have you have world leaders who have said worse. You have you have world leaders who have said worse. You have, and they still kept they they still kept their accounts. They weren't banned. Trump they couldn't even. There were there were messages within the internal Slack uh, communication where they couldn't even find a reason to ban him, and they just did so because of like the political biases and the viewpoints of everyone um, with like w- within Twitter. So there were some dissenting viewpoints, and God bless these people. One person uh, was from a country that had. Um, you know, censorship and understood that it was, it destroyed discussions and, and said, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this. Okay. He was from the most populous country in the world and they ban things there all the time. And again, that's like the template, like the template for a lot of things that took, pl- that's taking place now in the most populous region of the world is also the template for how Democrats would love, love to govern and rule this country. Okay, and we can start with the First and the Second Amendment. Disarming Americans under the guise of protecting people, which makes no sense because criminals don't care about laws. Criminals don't care about laws. And some of the states with the greatest curbs on the Second Amendment have the worst, worst homicide rates on the planet, not just in terms of the country. But other, other, um, other world leaders said worse they still had their accounts and infinitely worse and it wasn't like oh like a subliminal it was infinitely worse and so you have a situation where the people who wanted to ban trump did so because they could because politically it was beneficial for their side they don't care see here's the thing and we'll talk about this tonight in the live stream if you want to support my work my patreon is below ladies and gentlemen to my new patreons thank you um if you want to become a member, please do so. If you want to support um, the channel, also there's a, there's a super thanks. But be here tonight for the live stream in a, in a three four hours or so uh, at 5:45 p.m. Pacific. We're gonna have an amazing live stream and talk about all of this. But here's here's the issue, okay? There used to be a bond that the left and the right had in terms of the First Amendment that no longer exists. Younger Americans who are on the left, far left, want the power to control dialogue and speech. And it's not just younger Americans, older Americans who are on the left. The Democratic Party wants to control speech. Because if they can't redefine words or censor and silence opponents, they don't usually win grandiose debates. That's the truth. Okay? Their policies stink, and then when you debate 
when they debate their policy, they say, well, we had to do this because of that or that. Or, yeah, they, they barely acknowledge that their policies do like lead to terrible economy or terrible foreign policy. But then when they kind of do acknowledge that, oh, it's because of this or that, it's not our fault. Da, da, da. And the only way they can actually win is by censoring opponents or labeling them extreme while they're, you know, the bastion of morality and normality. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Be here tonight for the live stream this evening at 5.45 p.m. Twitter files 5.0 were amazing. Thanks.